what's good people it's rfg here today and we're gonna go ahead and go over why um this landmass that we live on known as turtle island is so significant okay so like i've been saying in earlier lectures um as far as my research for the past three to five years um i'm basically coming in into the understanding that this uh country we live in that th this uh this North American continent we live on um, has to be one of the oldest pieces of land on the planet. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer that Smithsonian National Geographic and most of the mainstream archaeologists are lying when they're saying, um, you know, all life on the planet started in one location. Um, I do not believe that whatsoever. They have an ulterior motive and a very twisted agenda behind that notion. Okay. And I'm about to touch on that um, when you listen to what I have to say in this lecture. OK, so this first video that I show you guys is going to be something that that uh, the government found underneath the surface of Mexico. And I cannot recall, you know, what I'm saying any person or any other group finding this same thing in another continent. I cannot I can't recall it. OK. This is the biggest crystal bed, the biggest crystal cave on the planet ever found in history. And it was found, I believe, in the year 2000 um, under the surface of Mexico, uh, a little bit over 1,200 feet underground. OK, so I'm about to play this video. Just listen very carefully. In the year 2000, a cave of crystal discovered by miners excavating a tunnel for a mine in Mexico. The main chamber contains some of the largest natural crystals ever found in any underground cave. The largest one uh, so far measuring, I think, 36 feet in length, uh, 13 feet in diameter, and over 55 tons. So, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. These amazingly huge crystals became so large because of the extreme, extremely hot temperature inside of the subterranean cave. Uh, it reaches a steamy 136 degrees Fahrenheit. Wait a second. He just said that down at that depth, okay, it gets anywhere from 120 to 136 degrees Fahrenheit. Wait a second. Wait a second. OK, that means that these crystals are being are being formed by the Earth's inner sun, by the Earth's inner sun. When carbon, when carbon is heated, when carbon is heated, OK, it forms into crystal. It becomes crystallized under pressure and under heat. That is how diamonds are created out uh, inside of volcanoes and then they erupt outside of the volcano you see what i'm saying and then you you see the diamond crystal okay so that there has to be a form of gas carbon and liquid carbon down in these caves for them to be crystallized under this uh extreme heat going towards inner earth and this just proves my earlier um notions my my earlier um beliefs that you know the inner sun is is real and this video is just is just further proof to back that up and this encourages microscopic crystals to form and you know rapid growth much faster than we used to see just gazing at these gigantic beautiful crystals one can't help but get carried away imagining what else awaits further exploration deeper inside these caves. Wow. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an author and anthropologist. I hope you'll join me in exploring the mysteries of the universe. And he just said it right there, ladies and gentlemen. He said, help them explore the mysteries 
of Inner Earth. And uh, I believe this is one of the, the books that he wrote. It's either a book or a DVD here. Yeah. Okay. So once again, okay, the government knows what's going on. The government knows the real history of the planet. They know the real history, okay, of this continent that we live on called North America. They know exactly why it's called Turtle Island. Because like I explained, um, the turtle, the sea turtle is responsible for creating all uh, two and four legged life on the planet. OK, all two and four legged animals, all of their DNA goes back to the sea turtle um, through genetic splicing. OK, so when when we put that into perspective, they call America Turtle Island because all other continents got their civilization from North America and from what we know as Atlantis. Atlantis is now Antarctica. OK, so we're about to touch on the significance of these crystal beds um, under Mexico surface, under North America. North and South America have the largest crystal beds, OK, under their surface out of any other land masses on the planet. Um, the same the same uh, scenery you were shown in the last video is what exactly what was shown in the Superman um, movie series that came out back in the 70s, the 60s and the 70s. OK, the, the 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 comic book hero, Superman, the movie series, Superman was very deep, people. It basically explained the true power of the crystals. OK, the true power of certain stones and crystals. Every stone and crystal carries a certain vibration with it. OK, what uh, however the crystal was formed, however the crystal was created. The crystal is going to embody that energy. OK, so it's either going to help the carrier or it's going to uh, harm the carrier, depending on what energy the crystal holds. And this Superman movie character, this Superman, it, it personified that. OK, because what was his <laughs> what was his weakness? His weakness was a stone known as kryptonite. OK, it basically showed the truth of the crystal beds being held okay going towards inner earth under the earth's surface and it basically showed the real power of these crystals okay and what was superman's real name his real name was cal l cal l okay i explained that in an earlier lecture ka the two first letters of this cal is ka ka is the embodiment of the spirit Okay, Ka is the spirit. El, okay, representing the El gods, okay, that were responsible for genetic splicing on this whole planet that we live on. Okay, Cal El is an El god that originated from the planet Saturn. Okay, El represents Saturn, and this deity right here, Superman represents those gods that were responsible for genetic splicing on the earth okay so i'm about to touch on um how deep this superman character really goes um when i go ahead and, and, and go towards ending this lecture but um i'm gonna touch on the significance of these crystals real quick these crystals okay this is selenite right here this is what you saw in the first video I, I, sh I showed, this is selenite crystals. And these uh, selenite crystals are being found under pyramid structures. OK, this is what your government is not telling you. Many forms of crystals, including these uh, these selenite beds under the surface of Earth. They're being found. Under. OK, these uh, these pyramid structures. OK, and if you do your research, every time our government goes to war with a certain country, I can guarantee you that that country had pyramid structures. OK, that had crystal beds 
under those pyramids. So, you, you know, I have people asking, you know, why do they need so much bloodshed? Why do uh, what? Why every year the, the government basically finds another country to label the boogeyman so we can go in and, and invade and take their resources? Why? Why? Because it all ties back to the pyramid structures. OK, uh, that are that are basically on top of these crystal beds. This is why the pyramids emit their electromagnetic energy. It's all stemming from the uh, crystal beds, people. OK, this is why the warlocks that control uh, the government around the earth that control all of the, the country's uh, armies and militaries. This is why they need bloodshed. This is why they need war. This is why war is such big business. I don't give a fuck who they say the bad guy is. I don't give a fuck uh, what kind of false flag, what kind of inside job they say happened. Um, it all ties back to these crystal beds being found under these uh, pyramid structures. OK. So these pyramids were built by our ancestors to store uh, these crystals. OK, that were very powerful. OK. And it started in North America. This right here is a pyramid in uh, in Arizona in the Grand Canyon. OK, over 200,000 years old. And this is another pyramid structure found in Pyramid Lake, Nevada. Pyramid Lake, Nevada, over 250,000 years old. OK, both of these pyramids that you see. Uh, that are in North America, they survived the pole shift. That's why there's so much water erosion around them because they survived a pole shift. Okay. So when we really look at what the pyramids really symbolize, why our ancestors really built these pyramids all across the earth, the pyramids are built to uh, to harness electromagnetic energy. From inner earth and to shoot that electromagnetic energy okay back out into stargates in the atmosphere of the earth okay the pyramids are somewhat cosmic penises okay that's what the pyramids are the Greeks didn't understand electromagnetic energy so the Greeks named the pyramids mount mountains of fire mountains of fire that's why you say pyra pyramid pyramid fire fire in the middle okay that's what the pyramid means fire in the middle the greeks didn't understand electromagnetic energy okay so that's where you get the word pyramid but these pyramids were built to harness the electromagnetic energy from inner earth and to shoot that energy back out into stargates in the earth's atmosphere okay that's what they were built for and that's why you find crystal beds under these pyramids. That's why our government goes to war every other goddamn year and kills innocent people because it's all a goddamn distraction. You see, it's all a distraction from um, it's basically used to disguise the warlocks. OK, these are warlocks that murder people on a scale of hundreds of thousands to millions all to harvest crystals. These are these are evil warlocks. OK, the Zionist Jews are evil warlocks. And it's all about the crystals under these pyramid structures and the pyramid structures were built. The same reason that ants, the same reason that ants build pure uh, build ant mounds. OK, the same reason why ants build ant hills. OK, the same reason. The, the, the ant, the ant and the bee are very, very, very significant animals on the planet. The, the ants were held in high regards, OK, to our ancestors as well. They were basically personified as the perfect creature on Earth. The ant was basically personified as the perfect creature on Earth. And I wonder why, because they all worked as a unit. They all worked in unison. 
if you attack um, any other of their relatives or anything that is tied to their mound, okay, you would be taken out immediately. And they all work in unison, no matter what. And their builders and their master builders. Look at these ant hills. Okay? Look at these ant hills. Unbelievable. Some of these, look, this ant hill right here is three, three times the size of this lady. Okay? So the ants were basically the first builders on this planet. <laughs> The ants and our ancestors, the El gods. That's why the ants were um, paid so much homage to by our ancestors. And, and the ant heel represents the same thing, the same structure as the pyramids that our ancestors built. Okay. So when we look at how the ants uh, dwelled and how they, how they thrive, they build these mounds and then they live inside of these mounds. And then they live under the surface of the earth. Well, when you look at what our ancestors did, our ancestors built the pyramid structures, built mound like structures. And guess what? They lived inside of the pyramid structures and they lived inside of inner earth, ladies and gentlemen. OK, this is why the pyramids were built to harvest the energy from inner earth to harvest the crystal structures that were dwelling in inner earth okay to harvest that energy and to uh be and for the pyramids to be used as a form of shelter okay for our ancestors and this is another secret the pyramids all across the earth are gateways to inner earth okay this is why the pyramids most of them are blocked off with armed guards with AR-15s and M-16s, people. Just do your research, okay? The ones at Giza, the ones in Egypt, okay, they are, <laughs> they are being blocked off by military forces. And this is why. Because the, the damn pyramids are the same structures as these ant hills in comparison. They're being, they're, they were used by our ancestors as a form of harvesting electromagnetic energy gateways to inner earth okay they were also gateways to inner earth just like the ant heel the ant heel causes the ants to dwell um, to make their own structures and their own society in inner earth under the earth's surface okay so the yeah the 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 ant hill is just a microcosm of the pyramid structures. This theology was also shown in the cartoon known as Voltron. Okay, if you study the cartoon Voltron, this whole uh, cartoon series, this whole movie series Voltron, it was about these um, these galactic beings. These galactic celestial beings going from planet to planet to go inside of the planet, to go inside of the planet and to harvest the crystal structures um, inside of each planet that they went to. OK, it's not it's not a game, people. That's what our ancestors did. That's what our ancestors are still doing. That's what this government is still doing as we speak. Um, when you really look at this symbology in Voltron. And you look at the information I just showed you and uh, you look at the information that's tied to Superman, you will know that humans are not supposed to be dwelling on the surface of the earth. OK, I will say it again. Humans are not supposed to be living on the surface of the earth. We're actually supposed to be living in inner earth. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do your research, humans live anywhere from 100 to 300 years living in inner earth just like the goddamn sea turtle just like the damn sea turtle the sea turtle lives anywhere from 100 to 300 years old okay so humans uh if we were to to live and dwell in inner earth um we would be subject to no pollution no kind of environmental pollution no kind of poisoning 
um, and the and the level of purity in the oxygen, the carbon and the oxygen and the nitrogen levels in in our Earth would cause us to live anywhere between a hundred and three hundred years. People, this is all real. This is all real factual information that you you can look up and verify for yourselves. Okay, we are supposed to be living in inner Earth, not on the outside. Okay, we have been lied to. This is why the pyramids were built, and this is why um, ants, okay, basically conduct their civilization uh, in the manner that they do. Okay, so let, touching on this Superman character, just to go ahead and prove wh what I had to say about Mr. Superman. So who was Superman? Superman was Cal El, symbolizing the spirit. The spirit coming from the El gods, Cal El. Okay, Superman derives his power from the yellow sun of Earth. From the yellow sun of Earth. Okay, the yellow sun of Earth is Horus, basically the star that Earth is orbiting around. That is the yellow sun of Earth. Okay, Superman derives his power from the yellow sun of Earth. And he's forced under a red sun Aiken to that uh, to that of his home world. So the red sun, the red sun Aiken is that of his home world. <laughs> or exposed to red sun radiation. OK, Superman uh, rapidly loses his powers. OK, this is a. This is a half truth, ladies and gentlemen, because right here, this is showing that Superman had had origins to this uh, this red sun. OK, and it just told you in this article that the yellow sun was the sun that was tied to the earth. OK, so right here we have dual dual sun, dual sun symbolism. Two sun, dual sun symbolism. Okay, Cal L gets his energy from the yellow sun. Okay, and his origins originate from the red sun. Okay, so I can show you exactly what they're talking about. Horus, the sun we see at the horizon every day, is Horus. That is the that is the star that the planet is orbiting around. Horus. The, the sun that we see every day, then the darker sun, the red sun, the older sun, Ra, is known as Nibiru, is known as the second sun, Nibiru. And that is the origin okay, of our of our ancestors. That is basically the star that is being used as a light ship from Earth to Nyan Tolo, to Nyan Tolo. Nyan Tolo is the planet orbiting around Sirius C. So the bridge point between Nyan Tolo and Sirius and Earth, okay, is Ra. It is Ra. It is Nibiru, okay? So this is the yellow sun, Horus, that was giving uh, Superman his powers. Then he originated from Nibiru, from Ra, from Nibiru, which was a light ship from the goddamn Sirius star system, people, okay? Right here. This was posted from a 1983 um, article that came out in, in the newspapers all across the country in 1983. OK, this right here in the center, you see, is the quote unquote yellow sun. OK, that was the quote unquote. Yellow, yeah, that's the quote unquote uh, yellow sun. And then right here to the left, you see the red sun. You see the red sun where um, Cal L Superman originated from. OK, Cal L is an L God that gets his powers from starlight and basically um, can encapsulate his power in crystals. OK. Remember, the, the crystals are carbon. They're carbon. So what the, what what they are is they're heated. They're heated forms of melanin that basically gain crystal form. OK. That's what the crystals are. OK, dual sun symbolism and the Superman uh, cartoon, the Superman movies as well. There you see 
okay somebody took this image this is an amateur this is an amateur camera right here right here we see the quote-unquote yellow sun which is the sun that the planet is orbiting around and right here we see the quote-unquote red sun the quote-unquote orangish reddish sun which is Nibiru okay which comes into the sun and the earth's orbit uh, every 10 to 13,000 years okay and this astrological object right here will cause a pole shift on earth in the very near future okay and when you look at a lot of these superheroes especially um superman this this deity right here superman very very deep very very deep symbolism people because he's called cal l because he originally he, he represents the original l gods that come from nyan tolo the planet orbiting around sirius c okay and then they uh their ancestors dwell on nibiru a planet orbiting around the nibiru star okay which is making its way towards earth so um nibiru and the sun are basically ra and horus okay nibiru and the sun are basically ra and horus okay horus is um the sun we're supposed to see every day that the image goes across our horizon and Ra is responsible for rapture for rapture like events on the earth okay and Superman is technically the embodiment of all melanated people on earth we are all people of the Sun we are all children of the Sun and Nibiru we are all children of the El gods okay our melanin is supposed to be activated okay when the time is right our melanin is supposed to be activated and when it gets activated when you heat up carbon what happens it becomes crystallized it becomes crystallized ladies and gentlemen that is none other than Merkaba activation okay plain and simple so that's really all I had to say on this topic my next video is going to be breaking down the significance and the symbology behind the uh, the Hulk behind the uh, comic book character the Hulk okay so once again I appreciate everyone who supports RFG and Atlantean movement like subscribe please share this video it's the chosen one man I'm out